Lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord tonight. Father, we honor you, Abba Father. King of Zion, Judas Lion. Just lift your hands towards heaven and bless this loving Father. You are worthy to be praised, Elohim. The God who made the heavens and the earth. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, Shake, shake me. Oh, go. So me.
let your voice be the loudest. Lift your voice, everyone.
I want to appeal to the body of Christ, the larger body of Christ, especially the apostles and the prophets and the ministers of God. There are different assignments that we are given. I'm saying this to help create understanding. In, we are like a body, like the human body. We're like a football team. Um, if you notice in the human body, there are some organs whose job is to do defense. For example, we have the white blood corpuscles. Um, we have antigens. What is their function in the body? Whenever the en enemy, now we're talking about bacteria, fungi, invade. Those things that will have killed us, those organs go to work to destroy them. It is part of those organs. Now, if you see him, maybe he's trying to contend against doctrinal errors, uh, certain viruses that are trying to come against the body of Christ or to destroy God's plan for the nation. Please understand, that job is very difficult, like the job of kidney, like the job of, of the liver. It's very difficult. Everybody cannot just be hand that does touching. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. Let's pray for one another to grow, mature, perfect in our different ministries. If you don't have people that do that, then this thing that is prophesied in the last days about rise of false prophet, deception, false whatever, we invade and decimate Christianity. If the body of Christ does not have defense mechanism. So do you see what this means? That in a football team, everybody cannot be evangelist that is on the field scoring goal. There are people you keep near the goalposts that are defenders. They take the worst hits to make sure that we don't lose. There is also a man that is at the goalpost that is a goalkeeper to make sure. But this whole thing is a team. If you don't understand the function, you hate your liver. You hate your kidney. And you that is hating your kidney, you need that ministry. It's for your good. It's for all the good of the whole body. Because the sanctity of the faith must be preserved. The authenticity of the faith and of the priesthood must be preserved. It's not an easy job to do. But that's part of the job of prophets. But let me also say this. There is a warning ministry of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you see in the Bible prophets warning. You see Jeremiah's warning. It's not because they hate Israel. It's to prevent tragedy from happening. Every generation that misunderstands this, you know what they do? They go kill that prophet. You remove kidney. You think kidney is doing something bad. You remove your liver. Then what happens? Every small poison that comes kills the person. Have you seen what has happened now? They took Jeremiah, put him in the dungeon. Put him there. He is trying to prevent Babylonian invasion. God does not want because he hates his people. He wants because he loves them to prevent. And the people that are given this ministry suffer a lot. Please, I beg us. I beg us. The tough parts and that's the most dangerous part, is after protecting against the enemy, when we now have to also do corrective measure among the brethren. Sometimes that one requires talking to the individual privately before we do public. And that's part of what has to happen. There has to be forums where the apostolic community 
we'll be able to have each other's number and be able to reach them. And we don't have that now. There has to be a forum where we meet once in a year. There has to be a forum. There has to be a forum. Somebody has to start it. Where everybody can be able to reach everybody because there are some things just like in management of intelligence that should be internal. God help us. I am convinced that the purpose of God for the church in Nigeria and Africa will survive. Because there are men and women, there are some of them that have made up our mind that will pay whatever price. Everybody lift up your hands and talk to the Lord. You have a role in this thing that is brewing. This is the last day, the last move of you have prophecy. You have heard what prophet from the days of Paelton and even beyond from all over the world. What has been spoken concerning this nation? We had that season has come. That season has come. That's why you see the dragon running helter skelter, fighting with every means over the destiny of this nation. Talk to the Lord. You need to locate your place. Because when we're talking about God's destiny for Nigeria, it narrows down to you. You. God has a big plan for you. God has a unique role for you. Talk to him. We're going to pray for the sick, but it's more than just bringing healing to those that are sick. You may be seated just for a few minutes. I'm going to show you one or two things because the Lord gave me an assignment. Uh, one of the things he wants out of this camp meeting is to raise a mighty army of healers. Our world is in need of healing. The world is a broken world. Families are in need. It doesn't matter where you are, you are outside, wherever you may be seated. I want you to know that the hand of Jesus is coming here to touch you. Is the end of that affliction in your life. Wherever you may be watching from around the world, it can even be in a hospital. And I'm not just talking by myself, I'm sent to bring you this good news. But then as I talk to you, I'm also saying to talk to the rest of us in the body. Jesus said, as my father has sent me, so send I you. His mission is our mission. His ministry is our ministry. His mandate is our mandate. He did not just preach. He brought healing to the sick and to the suffering. The Bible said how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Notice the word all. Notice the word all. Notice the word all. So the Lord sent me to come and awaken you to your assignment, to your responsibilities. He saved you so you can become a savior. He healed you so you can become a healer. He delivered you so you can become a deliverer. The world is broken. The world is hurting. And the world needs you and I. The world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. If you take miracles out of Christianity, what you have is an empty carcass. Christianity is a miraculous life. If you remove miracle out of Christianity, what you have is a dead religion. What you have is a set of philosophy. Christianity is a calling to supernatural life. Your Bible is one third miracles. Look at how thick that book is. One third of it, record of miracles. You don't believe in miracles, you don't believe in God. 
No miracles, no Jesus. We can pack our bag and go home. Then it's just like any other religion. But we have something no other religion has. We have something no other person has. Except God's elect. We have the answer to the problems of our world. No other religion can cleanse a leper. No other religion can give sight to the blind. No other religion can raise the dead. No other religion can unstop deaf ears. No other religion can lift people out of the dungeons of sin, the shackles of sin and bondage to Satan and free them into a new life. We are not just called to raise physically dead people. We are called to raise spiritually dead men back to life. We are not just called to heal the physical body. Jesus' healing ministry includes healing the emotional bruise. The broken hearted people who are shattered. Their walls have collapsed. Their life have imploded. They have no more hope. They are living in depression. Some of them are at the point of suicide. We are giving something that can bring them back to life. We are not just called to heal people who are physically sick. We are called to heal families, to heal relationships that are shattered, to heal marriages. Jesus gave us the tool to heal whole society. I'm talking to you about the miraculous movement. Christianity is a miraculous movement. If we are going to get the job done, Matthew chapter 4, I want to read from verse 22, from verse 23. Matthew chapter 4. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all. Be marking the word all. I'm going to show you a lot of all this night. And then we're going to deploy it and all will be healed. Be noting it is all. Healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases among the people. And then verse 24, and his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torment and those that were possessed with devils and those that were lunatics and those that had palsy and he healed them. Remember he said all and he healed them. That means he healed all of them. This is the mystery behind the advance of Christianity. It is not theology. It is not philosophy that gets the job done. It's a miraculous movement. This is the key to taking nations. This is the key to taking cities. If you take the gospel message and leave out the miraculous movement, you've made the biggest mistake. God did not send us to convince the world with mere talk. The kingdom of God is not in words. It's in power. Jesus said, if I cast out devil by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Kingdom inversion is power inversion. Kingdom inversion is power inversion. He went about, keep the script, okay. Uh, it's good that you're showing them the scriptures. It's nice. When you show them, you come back to where we were. He went about preaching the kingdom and then healing all. And then he, casting out devils. 
Restoring those that have mental illness. That's how the kingdom comes. When the kingdom of God invades the earth, the order you find in heaven starts happening there. There's no sickness in heaven. So when it comes, it comes into conflict with afflictions of people. There's no oppression in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no demonic possession in heaven. All those things that contradict the will of God, when the kingdom comes, it comes into conflict with them and takes them out. And they establish that heavenly order on the earth. Hey, we're in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. His friend went throughout all Syria. They brought to him all the sick people. He healed them. Then verse 25. Watch. And they have followed him great multitudes. So this is what jams the largest stadiums everywhere in the world. And there is nothing they have built that can take the number of people that are going to be coming into the kingdom in these last days. The Bible said... And I beheld, lo, a great multitude that could not be numbered of all nations, of all tribes and tongues and kindred standing before God. And when the elder asked a question, when John asked a question, the elder, one of the 24 elders explained who those men are. He said, these are they that came out of the great tribulation. So even in these last days, with all the signs of the time, with all the tribulation and the hardship of this time, we're going to have the highest number of souls, billions of souls coming into the kingdom. What is going to be responsible for that? Kingdom coming with power. So, the miraculous movement is what goes with the gospel. It is not for some special evangelists or some special apostles or just a few people in the kingdom. No. He said, this sign shall follow them that believe. Once you give your life to Christ, you qualify. This sign shall follow them that believe. And it's for this reason the Holy Spirit was poured out upon all flesh. So that whenever you read how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, you can now put your name there. How God anointed David of Nigeria. How God anointed Jerome of Abraka. How God anointed, put your name there and put your location who will now go about doing good and healing all that we oppress of the devil. is the same Holy Spirit that was on Jesus that has come upon believers. It's the same Holy Spirit. What we have to learn is how to turn him loose. Jesus did not give us a junior Holy Spirit. Jesus did not give us another Holy Spirit. He said, I will send you another comforter. And the word is palakletos. There are two words in Greek. There is alos, uh, hetero. Then there is word alos. The word Jesus uses alos, parakletos. Heteros means a different breed, something of a different breed, a different species. So it could be different. That's not what he used. What he used are alos. Somebody of the same kind, the same as me. So that when he comes in you, what you have is me in you. Paul called it the greatest mystery of the New, New Testament. The mystery hidden from all ages, which is now being revealed to the saints. Christ in you, the hope of glory. If Christ is in you, you are a world changer. If Christ is in you, you have the answer to the problem of your world. Don't lock him in. Turn him loose. Stop looking for power when you are carrying the source of it. You have the generator and you are looking for electricity. Kain Jidan is in your house and you are looking for power. Christ in you. 
Christ in you. We have forgotten who we have received. We have forgotten who we are carrying. We have forgotten what we are carrying. Now the devil is running crazy, running wild. Let me show you guys something. There is a, a hidden secret in scripture that all of us, and if you are sick, get ready. This is your night. I'm talking to two groups. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to those. Even you that is sick, if you discover it, nothing can hold you bound anymore. You can command your own healing. <laughs> if you discover it, you get out of the witch and walk away. Can anything hold Christ down? No. And he is in you. He came in you. So he can continue what he started 2,000 years ago. That's why he said, as my father has sent me, so send I you. It happens to me every now and then. Once I'm with my phone in my hand and I was looking for my phone. And I, I searched everywhere. I couldn't find it. I went to Pastor Sarah. I said, please, where is my phone? Did you take my phone? He said, what are you holding in your hand? And I now looked. Ah, I don't understand how it happened. Once it happened with the car key. And I was looking for the car key and I was holding it. That's what is happening to many of you. It's in your, bring out your hand. Say, it's in my hand. Say, it's in me. And you're looking for it. If you're a believer, you are in need of a miracle, you're looking for something that you have. If you're a sinner, you're in need of a miracle, you're also looking for something that is near you. It's just beside you. You're looking for an article that has been paid for. Somebody has paid for it and made it available to you. Do you know that it's easier to receive healing than to receive salvation? Do you know that between salvation and healing, that healing is easier? Once you can receive salvation, there is nothing in this world that can stop you from receiving healing, if you know. It's on the same cross he paid for the two articles. Actually, the two things are in one receipt. I take you to a shop and buy you a refrigerator. In that shop. And in that same shop, I buy you a TV set. And they write one receipt in containing two of them and give it to you. Then you carry your fridge, put it in your car, and you're going. And then you are finding it difficult to carry the TV. No, there is no struggle in getting the TV. It has been paid for. The same way you collected the other one, that's how you can collect it. The basis for the healing ministry of the church is the cross. The foundation, the basis for the healing ministry of the, of the church is the cross. The same way, the basis for the saving ministry of the church is the cross. I heard Dr. T.L. Osborne tell a story. He was the first man to hold crusade, mass crusade and feel a stadium. He's the first man that did that. This thing started with the healing revival in the U.S. But even when it started, they were doing auditoriums, tents and all that. And it was in Puerto Rico that the first mass crusade. And after he did it, other men of God got free to start doing it. And he said to do it, he went to F.F. Boswell. There is a gentleman that had a tremendous healing ministry and sat and heard him. He was talking with him. They did some programs together. And then Bosworth said, if you bring 100 people right now on the out, preach the same, these are sinners, preach the same message of salvation based on the cross. Explain to them how Jesus died for them. If 100 of them believe it and they receive Christ, how many of them will be saved? 100. We God say, no, no, no. I don't want to save like 10. I will save only 90. I leave 10 out. 
I will say 50-50. The scripture already made it clear that it is not the will of God for any to perish. And that's why Jesus went to the cross, died for all men. The Bible said that by the grace of God, he might test death for all men. All men. So this is the man that got the breakthrough that started mass healing. F.F. F. Bosworth. Then, as he was sharing, T.L. was listening. Then, Bosworth moved ahead. He said, in the same way, if you bring 100 people, no matter what is wrong with them, if you preach the gospel and show them how on the same cross, Jesus paid for their sickness. And they all believe it. And now accept it. He said, how many of them will be healed when you pray for them? He said, the same 100. You know why? Because it's also not the will of God that any should be sick. So, I want to open up a secret about healing ministry. There are seven principal things that unlock this. Now, because you see now we're in the age of fake miracles and all of this. Why? Because the church have lost these secrets. They've lost the key. They've misplaced the keys. One of them can launch you forth. Just one. And I want to start with one. You know what it is. T.L. said, I don't have any special anointing. He said, I envy you people who talk about your anointing, your this. But I get more result than all of you. They brought 200 and something deaf people, all the 200 and something head. They brought 11 lepers. They went to the lepers, called, they brought them, all the 11 cured. They brought this number of deaf mood, all of them healed. He said, you people are the one talking, anointing, this and that, but me, I get more result than all of you. He said, I don't have any anointing, I don't have any whatever. Because the power is in the cross. If you can help human beings to see it. Do I have to have any special anointing? If something is paid for in a supermarket to just for you to collect it, all I have to do is help you see truly that it's yours and show you evidence. Do you need to get the choir to sing three special numbers for you to? That's how easy it is to take your healing. What happened is that as we're progressing, Emphasis on the anointing overtook the revelation of the cross. It's not that anointing is bad, no. People are now talking about, and he has created an era of men of God use it to puff off themselves. Meanwhile, the Holy Spirit only glorifies Jesus. He doesn't see Jesus, he's not doing anything. He came to testify of Christ. He came to glorify Christ. You want to see the power of the Holy Spirit? What are he lined up? Creepy people. All of them got up. But he will tell you, I don't have any special anything. I just discovered two things. The first is Christ in me. What he did before, when he was here on earth, he now does through me. And that is what he came to do in every believer. There are four revelations of Jesus you can have. One is to see him in the spirit. Many of you are going to experience that. Some of you already as I'm talking. The Holy Spirit reveals him. You get a vision of him. You have an encounter. This night, there will be so many of such encounters. Some will see angels. Some, as I'm praying here, and even beyond the service, a lot of such things will happen. He came here with thousands of angels. He told me, I've walked with him. I know him. And he particularly said, when I get there, I should tell you that he is here. And he will make himself known. But that's one level. So, I hear men of God these days, they talk about Jesus walked into my room. They make it one special, whatever. The Lord has appeared to me three times in the course of my life, but I don't make, talk too much about that. Because sometimes what people do is to use it to boost public image.
I won't be an apostle without that. There is a second revelation of Jesus you need to have. It's in the word. That one is even more powerful than this one that appears to people. Huh? You can go to the fourth gospel. As you read it, just place yourself beside him as one of his disciples. Just be traveling with him. When he's stopping the storm, be there. When he's walking on water, just be there. At least you, at least you can sit in the boat and watch. When he's opening blind eyes, watch. Watch how he spoke. Watch what he did. I remember I had to deal with a case of raising, meaning trying to pray for somebody that has died to come up. And we tried, tried, prayed, prayed. Nothing was going on. Now, and uh, so I paused for a while and I asked the Holy Spirit, what is going on? He said, can't you see? They actually went to bring the body from where they kept it in mortuary. The person had been dead and I was out. I traveled, I came back and they brought, can't you see that the body has become warm? So I said, the body is warm. I can tell. It was cold when we started. It's now warm. I don't know what it means. He said, the person you've been calling is here, but he's not able to get into the body. I said, so what is stopping him? He said, you, because you gathered everybody. Check what I did every time I... I send everybody away except one or two who are in agreement with me. I said, oh my God. He said, we don't have time to explain to you. I will explain to you later. But negative energy affects the human spirit. Oh, yes, yes. Do you know that even witches that fly, if they leave their body, eh? if you enter the room where the body is and change the whatever, they can come back, they won't be able to enter and they can die. The man will later die. There are some things you can do around that. So I said, he said, read everywhere. Look what I did. I said, oh, Lord, sorry. So I called the, I said, I can't drive your people away. You are the one. See it in the Bible. Get rid of all these people. But the mother and they can stay. And they did. You know what shocked me? The moment they did, we walked back in. The atmosphere was electric. Yet it was filled with conflict. So I said, Lord, they are gone. He said, just tell the person to wake up. I said, in the name of Jesus, wake up. And the eyes opened. Do you see? It has nothing to do with me. Remember, he is in you. We need to now learn how he operates. But to do that, you need to go back to the book and see it. Study it. Because how he operates is how you are to operate from now. It's no longer you that live. It's Christ now living through you. But you have to learn how he operates. You have to learn. We're talking about doing the works now. We're talking about doing the works. Okay, Senator Ross. Let me explain a mystery to you. John chapter 14, verse 10. If you look at verse 12, he said, Whosoever believes in me, the works that I do, he shall do, and greater works than this. That's verse 12. But the secret is revealed in verse 10, and the secret is revealed after this statement also. The secret behind this is stated three times in that text. He gave the secret before telling us what he does. You want to know the secret? Look at verse 10. Believers thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father in, that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So you see all the miracles of Jesus, what happened? Is the father, the indwelling, the father dwelling in him was the one doing all the works. So what Jesus had to learn is how the father functioned and just cooperate. You are just the body. You let the indwelling do the work. This secret that he operated is what he now transferred to us. That today, it is not us, it is Christ in us doing the work.
Do you know what he calls the Father in me? And today he calls it Christ in you. Do you know what it is? The Holy Spirit. The way the Father lives in you is through the Holy Spirit. The way Jesus lives in you is through the Holy Spirit. The physical Jesus is at the right hand of God though. When the rapture comes now, he will hang in the air. All of us will go to meet him and then we'll go back. He's a person on his own. But you see, the problem with him being like that is that when he was on earth, he can only be in one place at a time. When he's touching this leper, he's not helping somebody in Lagos. When he's in Galilee, he's not in Jerusalem. So the Lord was looking for a means how he can be everywhere doing the works of Christ everywhere at the same time and turn the whole world upside down. And to accomplish that, the man Jesus needed to die, shed his blood, make atonement for our sin. That atonement makes our body fit for the Holy Spirit to come and indwell. That atonement makes, go check all the tabernacles built for God in the Bible. Even the temple built by Solomon. You finish building it, it's empty. No Holy Spirit. No Shekinah glory. Until something happens. The priest has to offer a sacrifice. Make atonement for all those intentions. Make atonement for that. Then take that blood, go to in to the mercy seat and apply it. In all the cases, the Bible said, when the priest finished, there was nothing in that ark except he described what was in it. For example, in, in First Chronicles chapter 5, from verse 11 all the way, Solomon's temple. They were describing it. Nothing happened. But the moment they finished atonement, the Bible said, the glory of God filled that temple. The priest could not stand to minister. This is the same people that brought the ark. This is the same people that manufactured that ark. He said, human being that made it. But now that person that made it can't enter. The person that even brought it in can't enter. This is the same people that set up the tabernacle. Now they can't enter. The priest could not enter. Why? The glory of God has filled his house. What the blood did is to make the way for God to be able to indwell you. That's why you can't have Pentecost before Passover. Passover paved the way for Pentecost. The Father in me is what was responsible for all those miracles. You know why you are not seeing miracles? You are carrying what Jesus carried. You are not aware of it. You are living from the outside. So you live from the body. So you live at the canal plane. When I stretch my hands to touch a blind man, I remove David. The only thing David contributes is the wire. That's why he needs my hand. The vehicle. I remove me. The Father in me is what does the work. I stretch that hand from within. And sometimes I don't even get to the eyes. A man has been knocked out and his eyes open. Sometimes I get to touch them and the eyes. Whenever I'm distracted, I'm too much into, and I'm not able to do this. Nothing happens. What I transmit is internal. You don't see what the wire transmits. The wire transmits something called current that can shock you. What I transmit is invisible, but it is the Father in me is the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. One time I was traveling. And I was already tired. I've been preaching for more than four days, morning and evening. And I was tired. And it was Sunday evening. And uh, we were late to the airport. So we drove in. And the flight was taking off. And there was a deaf man there. I don't know how he was positioned. Whether, whether he walks in the air, 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 airport or whatever he was doing there. And I was trying to rush to go on board. And he was doing, ooh, I think it was money that he wanted. Then some of the officials, because those officials know me, they came to greet me. They said, oh, no, 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 no. Let him pray for you. Let him pray for you. Let him pray for you. And uh, they were giving him all those signs. So 
I left him and rushed to go and board. The Holy Spirit said, go back. So I stopped just about the security point and turned back and got back there. I was tired. I didn't feel like praying for anybody. I wasn't feeling any anointing anywhere. So I just closed my eyes a little, put my hands on his ear and reached inside. Because it's the father that dwells in me. It's not Pastor David. I can't, I can't heal anything. And touch him with that inner hands of Jesus. And rebook the deaf spirit to come out of him. He fell on the ground and uh, got up and started hearing and started talking. And guess who were the people catching for me? Airport officials. Those people were uniform. And so I ran. I was the last person to board, sat down. I don't know when we landed in Abuja because I was floating. I floated through. I was in another world. I was thanking God, worshiping, and all of that. Do you know since that day, that airport, if I show up now, you will see all those. And I, there were one or two of them I can still recognize. You see them doing like this, doing all that. Before they would check me, check, I almost put hands inside my. <laughs> I went to eat. I was a student. And uh, I went to eat. It, the, 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 the restaurant is on the hill. My university had some hilly part. And I can call the name. It's a dark woman. Can call her name. May fine is what they call that restaurant. I went with my friend to eat. Yeah. And I got there. They were serving us. We were waiting. We were placed our order. The next thing, one boy came. And he was bringing water for people. And then finally he turned to our table. Something inside me boiled. I have been looking for a way to reach some of these students in that section. And it was like it was the opportunity. That place was jammed. And inside me, I had this agreement. The Holy Spirit, that assurance. So I told the guy to come. And I told the madam to come there. I said, what is wrong with this boy? He told, she gave some information. And my friend put hands on my back. We put hands on his ears. And drove out the deaf and dumb spirit. His ears open and his back. Some of the people who came to eat ran. They left their food and ran outside. When he was fine, when he finished kicking and he was fine, he was hearing. Some stood at the door, they were looking. And I turned and said, you guys can come in. I'm sorry for disrupting this place. No, they said disrupt it. Now that, <laughs> and I'll let, let people to Christ. Do you know? I ate free food for two years <laughs> until I got ashamed of eating free food. So, yeah, yeah. Amazingly, I was facing persecution at home, so I wasn't getting money. I didn't know God now used this to keep me. That madame fed me for two years. So after a while, I was now ashamed because we've been eating her food. And I felt that this was not good. You know what she did? She started bringing it. She located my boys' quarters and started bringing it. Of course, after we left school, one day I drove back to school and I found that I really blessed her with finance to thank her. I didn't have money to say thank you in those days. But you know what is the secret that unlocked this? The indwelling. Everyone said the indwelling. Where is the Holy Spirit? On top of your head or where? Where is he? Say he's in me. Colossians 1, 27 said, this is the mystery that was hidden from all ages. Now revealed. If you are going to understand Pauline revelation, if you are going to understand New Testament Christianity, you have to understand the indwelling. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. If he is in you, 
Then he came to do exactly what he did 2,000 years ago. I told you, go back, go back, go back to John chapter 14. Verse, verse. Yeah, 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 look at it. Verse 10 first. He said, the Father, believers, thou that I am in the Father and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He is the one that does these miracles, that does the work. So verse 11, he said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the work's sake. The miracles are the evidence of what he was talking about, the indwelling. So in verse 12, he now said, whosoever believes in me, watch, verily I say unto him, he that believes in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. He can even do greater works than this, shall he do. Why will he be able to do it? He explains the secret to us. Everyone said, because I go to the Father. Everyone say it again, because I go to the Father. The question is, what's the meaning of that? What's the meaning of because I go to the Father? Please show it to them in the other text, chapter. He said, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Holy Spirit will not come. That's the meaning of this. That indwelling that I'm experiencing, when I go to the Father, it will happen to all of you. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, what will happen? I will send him. He sent him on the day of Pentecost. He has been here for 2,000 years. He lives inside you. And yet you are doing nothing with him. He came inside Jesus. He changed the world. He came inside me. He's changing the world. He came inside TL as well. The same Holy Spirit. He came inside a number of people who have realized it's changing the world. He came inside you. He's dormant. He's the same Holy Spirit. There's no new Holy Spirit. He's a person exactly like Jesus. Alos Paracletos. Wine of the same kind, the same quality, the same as me. He is in you. Go to verse 20 of that chapter. He explains this thing one more time. The secret of being a world changer, operating in the miraculous. Look at what he showed in verse 20. At that day, after the comforter has come inside you, you have received the Holy Spirit. Look at what Jesus said. At that day, you shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and what? I in you. He said from that moment when the Holy Spirit comes inside you, the same way the Father was in me doing the works, I will now be in you doing the works. That day you will know that I am in my Father and ye in me and I in you. This is what I carry around the world. And this is what God gave to every believer. I think it was sometimes, I, you know, when I have a little time, I don't know what it was last camp meeting or whatever, where I brought all kinds of deaf people, all of them lying them on the stage. All of them head, not one. But all of them. It got to a point, my hand won't even get near their ear. Boom, it has opened. You see them. My hand will get there. I'm trying to touch them like Jesus would do. All of them, all of them. I brought people, they checked every one of them. How? The indwelling. And it's the same thing. Nobody has a bigger indwelling than the other. Because it's a person. There is no bigger or smaller Holy Spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit. 
There are two things in Christianity. Make much about the cross, and the cross will make much about you. Make much about the blood. Study it till it really enters. Second, make much about the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will make much about you. Stop despising the two greatest gifts that God has given us when he gave us salvation in his, through the death of his son and when he gave us the Holy Spirit. It's more important than all the money in this world. Study it. Meditate on it till. <laughs> Let me give us one more scripture on this and I'll leave it. I'll give you a second key before we pray. Okay. Let me see if I can give you up to three. Okay, let's see. Let me give you one more scripture on this. This is where Jesus explains that this is the secret to winning the world. He explains this same indwelling and repeat two times that that is the means by which we will win the world. So you see, any Christian that drops the miraculous movement has dropped the tool for this work. You can only go and talk. John chapter 17, verse 22. The glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. That they, may be, that they may be one even as we are one. So when he talks about our union with him, he compares it to his union with the Father. The way the Father indwelt him, that's how he indwelt us. He didn't say it's a different Holy Spirit he will give us. He didn't say it's another glory. The very one the Father gave him is what he gave us. The secret of his ministry is what he delivered to us. How God anointed Jesus of the Holy Spirit. Today you can say how God anointed John with the Holy Spirit. Today you can say how God anointed Jane with the Holy Spirit. It is the same Holy Spirit. The very glory you gave me, I've given it to them. That they may be one even as we are one. Watch verse 23. I in them. Do you see? You in me. That they may be made perfect in one. That the world may know that you have sent me. Do you see what we shake the world? With every believer, he arises this. That the way Jesus carried the Father is the way we are carrying him. I think it's a book of song that wrote something. I am the presence of God. I am his. Everywhere I go, Jesus Christ. That song is scripture. You are now the temple of the... You are a mobile vehicle carrying him everywhere. You don't need choir in the market. You don't need choir. I was teaching this to our five brethren. And these are young believers. These are young believers. There has been a madman that has been harassing the city, going around, and he sleeps on the gate. These two boys, on a Saturday morning, just walked down to where he was and started preaching to him. He said, even if you are mad, your spirit can hear us. He said, we address the spirits that have turned your life this way and bind them so the demons calm down. He said, they preach short messages about redemption, how Jesus died. Then they saw the man crying. He's been a man in chain. He saw he was crying. They were telling him how Jesus loves him. He was said, he said, do you want to give your life to him? He said, yes. They led the madman to Christ. After leading him to Christ, he told the powers that have changed him to leave him. He slept a little, got up, and said, Hey, that I'm naked. Hey, I'm dirty. Hey. You see, he begged them to go and give him. They gave him clothes. They took him in, took him to a baba. He babbed his hair. He now told them his story, told them where he was from, another state where he ran away from. Told them. They gave him brand new clothes. The next day was fellowship. These brothers brought this man to service. The guy gave his testimony, told, he said that now the problem is he, all the things he has done. For years he has been roaming, that he needs to go see his family. When the brethren 
you know, gave him some gifts and a group of brethren followed him. When they got, the whole family gave their life to Christ, they told us where they have been. Native doctors, all the different places. I called these two brothers closely because they are still young believers. I said, how did that get into you? He said, what have you been teaching us? You say it's not, there is no junior, no bigger Holy Spirit. There is the same Jesus in every believer. There is a revelation that brings revolution. There is something you guys have to know. Everybody in this community will be healed. Everybody. I don't care what has been holding you. That thing will leave you alone. There is a new dimension that God wants to bring the church to. And the bigger issue here is not even the healing. It is to unleash healers. I in them why you the father in me that they may be made perfect in one then the world will know when the world sees John doing it when the world sees Jen doing it when the world sees you doing it and they turn to and say see another they saw everywhere is happening that's how we are going to take back the society that's how we are going to take the nations An MD of a major organization fell down in the office. He was struck, half of his body. The high blood pressure got out of. And he just came from a trip. He fell. One of our sisters was there. Just a young employee. He hasn't been long there. As they were everybody, katakata, everywhere they were. Some were saying they have used jars on the MD. Some were saying the gear just quietly tried to go do something they were not allowing her but she now saw the wife of the man come because people have called him and they're talking about where to carry him he said madam i can help you i can help our boss please let me just pray for him before you would take him so he doesn't die the woman took her in drove everybody out he says sir one of his eyes closed he says sir I'm this and that, but I'm a child of God. I understand this kind of thing. Listen, it's not God's will for you. It's not your time. God loves you. And God wants to use this to draw you close. And she just said a few words. Tears was coming out of this. Your girl, this is a small girl. Tears was coming out of it. She just stretched her hand. Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. Jesus, I've been looking for a way to take the whole company. Just stretch her hand. The man's leg said they vibrating. Then she said, Sir, please give me your hand. Just get up slowly. He got up, sat. He said, Now just gently get up, come down. He, he, he put his feet, shook a little. He said, Just follow me. And he was taking the step, dragging the other leg, but the face straightened out. But the leg was dragging. She blessed him and let him carry him. The next day, the man came back to office complete. And he was now telling the story. After they took him, you know, whatever. He stroke, stroke. This is your finish. This is whatever. No! You are not finished with Jesus on the scene. Nobody is finished with you around. You are carrying the answer to the problem of the world. I, can I hear somebody say amen? amen. It gave you a, a diagnosis that you have cancer. No. That cancer will bow. Pull out the tools because these tools are in your spirit. Pull out the name of Jesus. Pull out the revelation of the indwelling. If I describe this indwelling for you, I don't have the time. But if you ever read the Bible and see that thing that is sitting on the throne, that fire, 
unapproachable light that no one can see. He said, our God is a consuming fire. You see, that that was sitting on the throne in heaven is what God managed through the mystery of the blood to deposit into the human spirit. We are an explosive. That's why the coming of the Holy Spirit inside the believer gives you atomic power. And you are supposed to explode it with your word and your touch. You know, a bomb is contained until you ignite it. You are supposed to ignite with your tongue. You blind spirit, I rebuke you. Live in the name of Jesus. But you speak it, not from the fleshly man that your mother gave birth to, but from the spirit man that Christ gave birth to that is in the, on the inside. It's the you in you that makes you the you you are. That's what he means when he says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Please, one more time. One more time. John 17, I need to close. I need to close. I need to close. That the world may believe that you sent me. I want you to see the second one. And that you have loved them as you have loved me. This was the part the Lord told me if you're going to get people healed, you have to help them overcome the spiritual insecurity, the guilt, the condemnation. Help them to know that I love them. The Bible is saying that God loves you exactly the way he loved Jesus. It took me time to believe it for myself. I'm talking to you, my friend. I'm talking to you, my brother. I'm talking to you, my sister. I'm talking to you that has been on that torment. God loves you exactly as he loved Jesus. You see, the price of any commodity, the value of any commodity is the price that is paid for it. If I have two pairs of shoes and one was bought for $10,000 and another one was bought for 10,000 naira, which one will you place more value on? When somebody comes to borrow, which one will you lend him? You're giving it 10000 because of the value. You know what $10,000 is? So the price that was paid for you is the life of the Son of God because God sees you that valuable. That's how much God loves you that he can put his life down. He thinks you are worth it. He thinks that your value deserves this kind of price. Do you know what it means to lay down one's life? It's called the ultimate price. When money loses its value, when everything cannot purchase, it now use life. Jesus gave his life in exchange for your life. So your life is high premium in the sight of God. God loves you the way he loved Jesus. That's why he put him down for you. He said, this is what hinders people. Because I've told you about that power that works. But here is a secret, ladies and gentlemen. The presence of the power of God alone does not create the miraculous. The power of God has to mix with the faith of the receiver. If you want to understand what I'm talking about, that a man has seed, men are seed planters. God created them and put seed in them and they produce it every night. Even at age 100, men are still producing seeds. You can see get many girls pregnant. One man can create a village. Just give him enough women. You've seen Solomon, 1,000 women. You can even do 10,000. One man can get all of them pregnant because you see, the seed keep coming every night. When he releases sperm, new ones come in the night. Women, you come with a particular number of eggs. As you get older, it depreciates. There is an age you get to. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to create fear. You just have about 10% left. There is an age you get to. You have about 5%. And you don't create new ones. But as powerful as men are with their seed, 
the seed cannot create a child without an egg. So, if you put that seed in a woman without egg, no fertilization. As powerful as God is and his creative energy is, he can create anything in you without your faith. And faith is nothing big. It's just I accept it. Just open up like a fallopian tube. I take it. Now I know it is mine. I receive it. And I believe it. And I accept it. In Jesus' name, then you get up and act on it. When I pray this night, when I finish now, whatever you could not do before, do it. The anointing is on you. What you need is to respond to it. Sometimes we say, turn the switch of faith on. Electricity is in your house, but TV is not showing. Just use the remote and turn it on. Electricity in your house, your, your fan is not working. Just turn the switch on. Power is already present. All you need to do is turn, turn the switch on. That's what you do with your faith. I believe it, Lord. I receive it. How did you get salvation? That's how you get healing. You repent of your sin. Then you say, Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I receive you into my life and you are made a brand new person. That's how simple it is to be healed. This is the reason when the woman with the issue of blood was healed, Jesus said, I fear virtue flow out of me, but when the woman was healed, instead of saying, my virtue has made you whole. Do you know what he told her? Your faith has made you whole. Because other people are touching the same virtue. Nothing happened to them. It is the person that touched with faith that collected it. Clap well, oh, clap, clap, so you can see. Faith is not hard to have once you know that the person loves you. You see? God is not holding anything against you, my dear. The barrier that existed, he broke it through the death of his son. Do you know why he can reach out his hand now and embrace you? Because Jesus has paid your debt. He has died your debt. The consequences of your sin, he has borne it on himself. The penalties that should have been yours, he has carried it. The suffering that you should have been carried, he carried it for you. So it becomes illegal for you to be suffering it again after he has suffered it. So you see, the person that takes advantage of people is Satan. Once they don't know, he takes advantage of them. That's why the Bible said in that scripture I showed you how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. You see, everybody Jesus healed, the scripture said it was Satan that was oppressing them. There was not one person that he said it was God that was oppressing them. Do you see what is going on? So you need to know the source of sickness, the origin of it. Then you will get angry and resist it the way you will resist sin. Let anger rise within you. You rebook it the way you will rebook sin. You will rebook it the way you rebook Satan. It's not God that is putting it on you, my dear. It's not God. It says Satan left the presence of Job. Uh, the presence of God struck Job with boys. It's always from him. Sometimes where people have made mistakes, people have made, he takes advantage of that sin and comes in. That's why wherever there is sin, Jesus offers forgiveness. He said to that one man, your sins be forgiven you. And the, the, the Pharisees, the man was crippled. Pharisees were wondering, who is this one that forgives sin? He said, which one is easier to say? Rise up, take up your bed and walk, or your sins be forgiven you. He said, let me now show you that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. He told the man, rise up, make your bed and go home. He got up. So he's telling you that many times when God heals people, he actually forgave their sin. That's what he said, that both are almost the same. 
in other words, he doesn't hold it against you. The reason is because he has been paid for. There is a secret to healing our world. There is a secret to saving our world. As powerful as the Holy Spirit is, he is dependent on preachers. The preachers is helpless without the Holy Spirit. Yet the Holy Spirit depends on preachers. You know why he doesn't have a body? He did all he did when he found the body of Jesus and he operated through him. Now he has gone back to the right hand of God. It's your body that he needs. You see, that's why the Bible said, how can they believe except they hear? And how can they hear except somebody is said? How can they hear without a preacher? So now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you something. It's the preachers that mess up the problem, create the problem. At their end, because they are the distributors, they complicate the issue and people are not able to get anything. They complicate salvation. Some are even charging people money, asking for profit offering to get saved. Some are not making healing a marketable product. You don't need to pay anything. It has been paid for. You don't need a prophet offering to get healed. It has been paid for. It's a free article just your, like your salvation. And that's why they kept the receipt for you in the scriptures. So you will see the terrible price that he paid. So you can't let Satan rob you of your inheritance. Let anger rise up in you. It's not just that people are praying for you. As they are, Rebook that thing. This is your end. It's over. You're no more begging. You don't beg where something is yours. Your brother came back from America, paid for a car for you, got the receipt, gave you. Will you be begging Mercedes to deliver the car? Jesus gave us his name so we can enforce his will on the earth. Everybody lift up your hands. Is this same Jesus? This same Jesus? This same Jesus? He's the one that does the work. Is this same Holy Spirit? This same Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that made sand, ordinary sand, become a living being. That's where he made us from. They, God molded our body and breathed on it. Mud, mud, ordinary mud became a living being. Because the Holy Spirit is not just a healer. He's a creator. And I'm talking, the Lord is asking me to talk to you about this. He's going to create new organs where there were no organs. Things that have been damaged, organs have been damaged beyond measure will be recreated. As I'm talking now, three new, three different people receive new, new kneecaps just right now as I'm talking to you. My friend, get up from where you are and move and you will see that you are fine right now. Thank you, Jesus. I rebook every sickness. I rebook every disease. I rebook every tormenting spirit to live in the name of Jesus Christ. That man that has been lying down, you had an accident, you have not been able to get up, get up, sir. The angel of God is standing behind you. You are feeling the power of God. Get up, sir. Get up, sir. And call us on the phone. Let us know what is going on with you. Get up. You are healed in the name of Jesus. I rebook every stroke, every spirit of paralysis. I command you to live in the name of Jesus. Place your hands wherever you are hurting. If you are around a sick person, you are in a hospital, no matter where you are, just place that man's hand on his body. If you can't place their hand, put your own hand on them. You can't hear. Put your hands 
If you brought a deaf person, put the one their hand on the ears. If you can't use their hand, put your own hands on their ears. If it's a blind person, put hands on their eyes or put their own hands. You spirit of deafness. You demons of dumbness. You tormenting spirits. I charge you in the name of Jesus, leave! You demons of paralysis. You crippling devils. I command you in the name of Jesus, leave! Heavenly Father, that they might know that you are God. That they will know that Jesus is your son. Touch every man and woman that is sick now. All over this place, outside, all over the world, wherever they are watching. Raise them from that bed of affliction. That they will know that Jesus is your son. That his name might be glorified that you will make yourself known to every man, every woman, and that they will know that you love them and you care for them. I charge every devil of sickness, every devil of infirmity to live in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We break the power of sickness over this place. We break the power of disease over this place. Every organ that has been damaged, let them receive an organ transplant. Every part of the body that has been damaged beyond repair, let them receive a replacement right now in the name of Jesus. Father, fill this place with creative miracles. Fill every house with creative miracles. Fill every life with creative miracles wherever it's needed. I speak to the spirits of blindness. I speak to the spirit of short-sightedness, long-sightedness, glycoma, Cataract, I rebook you in the name of Jesus. Leave. I speak to the spirits of mental illness, epilepsy, convulsion. You demons of convulsion and torment. You demons of epilepsy. You devils of madness. I rebook you in the name of Jesus. Leave. I speak to it against every skin disease, leprosy, every infectious disease, sexually transmitted diseases, every other contagious disease will cause you to die right now in the name of Jesus. Every internal organ problem, kidney failures, heart problems, liver problems, I rebook you in the name of Jesus, leave. Let your healing virtue rest upon everyone. Lift up your hands and just receive it. Tell him, I receive it. It is mine. I take it. You died on the cross to make it available. And I receive, I receive my healing. And I'm made whole by the power of the Holy Spirit. There are three different ministers carrying infirmities right over here. God just healed you. One of you, it is a terrible high blood pressure problem. You are just healed. One of you have been going to doctors for heart problems. Your heart palpitates. That thing just left you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The healing extended to three others. You are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. That person has been having back pain. You are not going through torments. At your back, you are a servant of God. You have just made whole. Bend yourself down. I rebook every back pain, spinal injuries, every problem with your spine. I command it to go. Bend down. You are healed. In the name of Jesus, bend up and down. You are being set free. Thank you, Jesus. There are six people that were involved in accidents. Some of them are cardiac accident. Some of them motor accident. God has just healed your bones. Get up and move. Do what you could not do before. In the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is doing a surgery in people's bodies. There are brain tumors that were just cut out right now. One of you have been having shattering headaches, but it's a growth in your brain. The pressure you are feeling has just vanished. You are healed 
in the name of Jesus. I rebook every growth. I rebook every cancer. I rebook fibroids. I rebook every tumor. Live in Jesus' mighty name. Every case of issue of blood, the Lord is touching you right now. Abnormal menstrual disorder. Touch your lower abdomen. Three ladies that have been bleeding beyond measure. The thing just dried up right now. You can go to the toilet, check yourself, you are fine. I rebook every disorder in your system, in your cycles. I rebook it to live in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> yeah, three cases of this persistent cough that have refused to go. The power of the Holy Spirit just dried it up in your system. There's a woman here that came with a breast tumor. God just healed you. There's another lady I'm seeing. It's not just tumor now. They've done operation on you before to remove and the thing is reappearing. I rebook that thing to leave you right now in Jesus' mighty name. There's another lady that has a problem and they said it's spreading around your body and you don't have much to leave. Daughter, the Lord said I should tell you I have made you whole. Rise up from that place. I rebook that spirit of death to leave you alone in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone that is getting that prognosis that you will die, that you will not live long. You are hearing voices telling you that you are not going to live long. I rebook those voices of lies, those spirits of death. Live in Jesus' mighty name. Those that are tormented by water spirits, tormented by evil spirits, they will allow you to rest, they will allow you to sleep. We rebook every demonic activity to live in Jesus' mighty name. You are not able to move your hand, just move it. Your hand locking of your shoulder, stiff, struggling to move it. Move it up, you see that you are free right now. Thank you, Jesus, I give you praise. I give you praise. I rebook all kinds of migraine headaches. Live in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, some of you are feeling like chains. Things have been pulled out of your head, pulled out of your system. You're feeling that deliverance work. There is a young woman here whose life has been shattered. You feel like you are just an empty body walking around. That life has nothing left for you. You want to end it. The Lord is healing you right now. That spirit of depression and despair just left you right now. And God said, I'm going to tell you, he's going to give you double for your trouble and it will restore everything that you have lost and he's going to send a brilliant man into your world to come and compliment what he's doing. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give him. Lift up your hands and just bless him. Thank him for your freedom. Thank him for your deliverance. To the Lord.
I just heard the operations are still going on. This time is three cases of pie cut out completely. That issue has ended. It has ended. All that struggle to go to the toilet has ended. We won't stop praising you. No, 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 no. We won't stop. Two different cases, you are the one disturbing God, I should call you out, is HIV and sickle cell challenge. That thing dies in your system completely right now. Go back to the doctors, you won't find a trace of it, my friends. We will stop praising you. We will stop loving you. Give him praise. 